Hello everyone, my name is Knackers, and I got this nickname from my mother, inspired by her massive hairy balls. Do you run a podcast or a just chatting stream with a question and answer? Are you in need of some kind of robot that can collect these questions for you so that you can pay attention to your fellow guests? Then I've got a video for you. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Streamlabs chatbot to collect questions that are submitted in chat by your community so that you can run a Q&A at the end of your show. And if you would like to look at my face the least amount possible, you can skip to this timestamp right here to get right to the tutorial. Don't let the door hit your anus on the way out. For years, I've been using a super easy method uh, to collect questions that are submitted in chat, all while being able to pay attention to my fellow hosts or guests. Uh, all you really need is Streamlabs chatbot in a couple minutes to set it all up. For my show, the Crocs and Hot Pockets podcast, we usually talk a really, really long time. We get really in-depth in the conversation, and for the most part, none of us are ever looking at chat. So while doing so, the, the lovely community in chat is able to ask questions um, to either myself or to the guests, and they're able to submit those questions with a simple command, exclamation point Q, followed by their question. They post that in chat, and as soon as they do, Streamlabs chatbot responds with, Hey, you dingus, your question has been received. Letting the person know who submitted the question that it was properly recorded. But don't worry, just because chat submits a question doesn't mean you have to answer it. Some of them ask really stupid fucking questions. Small disclaimer, the way in which I do this is not pretty at all. But it's free, it's simple, it works, and I've also never found anything better. So I'm currently working on a little project with my friend and my brother. It's a custom web-based bot that runs on a web server that pretty much does all of this, but in a much prettier way. Unfortunately, it's not ready yet. And even if it was ready, it's kind of complicated. And we'll worry about that for another video. There are just a couple of prerequisites. Prerequisites? Prerequisites? Prerequisites. <laughs> Prereqs. There's a couple prereqs that you're gonna need to have already. Uh, first, you need Streamlabs chatbot, obviously, and make sure that's downloaded and running. You wanna make sure that you have a Twitch account that has a moderator role in your Twitch chat, uh, and then make sure that that Twitch account is signed into chatbot. Usually, a secondary Twitch account that has mod status that you just use as a bot works pretty well. So what we wanna do is create a command that the chatbot can use to save questions for you to look at later. And this is all stuff that happens outside of chat once it's submitted. Call it something short and easy. Exclamation point Q works great. Warning, don't overcomplicate this, okay? We both know how Twitch chat works. If you make it too long or too complicated, too difficult to remember, they're just gonna complain and they're not gonna do it and then they're gonna complain that there's never any questions. As an extra tip, it'll help for you to have some sort of auto posting command in chat that says, hey, this is how you submit a question or to have maybe some sort of pop-up on screen that says use exclamation point Q to submit a question. Even with these reminders, they'll still mess it up. After you give your command a name, set your usage to Twitch chat, and you obviously wanna keep this command enabled if you wanna use it, feel free to assign this command to any group depending on how you organize your commands within chatbot, set your permissions accordingly, and a cooldown if necessary. Feel free to copy what I have on screen here. Alrighty, now down to the meat and potatoes. I'll give you a quick overview of what each part of the command response means. That way you have a, a firm understanding of what each part does so that you can troubleshoot it later if you need to. To help out, just open up a notepad file as a quick copy paste area. First, locate the link in the video description below that says chatbot response syntax. This is just gonna take you to a Google doc where you can copy and paste the link from. And we'll use that in a bit. We need to replace some of this info with info of your own. The, the, what you're copying and pasting is the full command, but you need to make it work for your machine. What we put in the response box for this command has to be word for word, character for character. We are telling chatbot that whatever is submitted 
needs to be saved locally to our computer as a CSV or a comma separated value file. Think like a, a spreadsheet format, um, but one that we can just view in a notepad file to make it nice and easy. The first part is us telling chatbot where we want to save the file. So we're gonna need a file path. As you can see, mine points here, but yours is obviously gonna be different, especially if you have more than one hard drive and your username for your computer is gonna be different. So open up a fresh file explorer. You can do that by hitting Windows key E, navigate to the area where you want this file to be saved and click in the navigation bar to reveal the file path. Highlight the entire path and copy and paste this into that notepad we opened up earlier. At the end of this file path, we need to define what the document is called and the file type in which we're gonna save it. So whatever your path is, just add a backslash questions.csv to the end um, and our file path is complete. This dictates what the file title is and what format it saves in. So notice here what I have next, I wouldn't really recommend adding any changes or changing anything. This is pretty standard. Um, this is the format in which the CSV is gonna be saved. Because this is a comma separated value, the content of the chat message is gonna be broken up by commas. So depending on how many commas the chat user puts in, this can be a major pain in the ass if you're using like a free CSV viewer or Excel. Uh, not a really a big deal if you use Notepad, which I recommend you use. So what is gonna be saved First, the username, then the word asks, and then whatever the person types in chat. So feel free to just copy what I have, make your life simple. Next up, we wanna determine what the bot will say when a question is submitted and when the command is successful. So this can be whatever you want. Again, keep it simple. I use thank you dollar sign user. Your question has been added to the queue. It's simple, works well. Feel free to type this out in the notepad. Next up, what you want the bot to return with if the question submission fails. Easy. Failed. Next. All right, so it's time to do some copy pasting uh, and we're gonna build your own kind of command response. First, copy your file path into your clipboard. Then highlight my file path, starting with the first quotation marks and ending before the quotations close. Paste. Skip over this part and leave it default. Then copy what you want the bot to respond with. Begin highlighting after the second pair of the quotation marks and end before they close again. Paste. In between the final open and close quotes, enter in your fail response and you're done. So once you have your entire string of letters and words and symbols, cross check it with mine to make sure that you aren't missing anything. A single mistyped quotation mark, a random backslash could render your command completely useless. And now it's time to testicle. Head on over to your Twitch chat. So if you don't know, you can go to twitch.tv slash your Twitch username slash chat, and that will take you directly to your chat window. I have a test command that always verifies whether my bot is in channel and working. So I'm gonna do that first just to test to make sure that the bot is communicating. And now I will test our question command. Exclamation point Q. Why is the ham and cheese hot pocket the best? And why does pineapple belong on pizza? If you did everything right, you should see the bot come back with a confirmation. Then head on over to where you told the bot where to save the file. Right click, open with notepad, and boom. Look how ugly it is. But it works. And that's what counts. For whatever reason that doesn't work, delete everything, copy and paste the command that I use, and just replace the file path with yours. So keep everything absolutely default and just put your file path where mine is. So this should be within the first pair of quotation marks. And if that works, then you know you messed it up. It's okay. I believe in you. You can fix it. That is it for today's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Of course, my DMs on Twitter and Discord are both open and you can find links to both of those down below. Uh, as always, videos like these are added to the Streamer Encyclopedia, which can be found at knackers.com streamhelp. And you're welcome to 
you know, poke around there and see if there's any other helpful information. I kind of use the streamer encyclopedia as a one-stop shop to point people in the right direction to get information about streaming. And uh, there's actually gonna be a, a big upgrade that's coming to the stream encyclopedia pretty soon. And we'll have a video coming out about that in the near future. Remember internet, stream safe, stream smart. Ask your mom about her massive hairy ball sometime. And I, yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, 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 I,